Okay, so if you remember basic math, well then this should be a very easy question to answer. And what we're dealing with here is a simple math word problem, and it's also multiple choice as well. All right, let me go ahead and read the question. It is as follows. You start a six hour shift at 7.30 a.m. If you finished 25% of the shift, what time is it? All right, let's take a look at our answer choices. So A, 8 a.m., B, 8.30 a.m., C, 9 a.m., and D, 9.30 a.m. All right, now, if you could figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but I'm going to really try to encourage you to do this problem without the aid of a calculator because it's still pretty easy to solve, even just using paper and pencil. All right, but uh, before we get into all of that, let me get into this, and that is I want to introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, let's go ahead and take one more look at the question before I show you the answer. So pretty straightforward stuff here. You start a six-hour shift at uh, 7.30 a.m. If you finish 25% of the shift, what time is it? Now, even if you don't know the answer, you should at least guess, okay? <laughs> For those of you that are still math students or still have to take a test, uh, when you're faced with a multiple choice exam, unless you're going to be penalized for the wrong answer, always guess. Now, I kind of remember doing a lot of that when I was in school. I'm like, I don't know. I like D today, so I'm going to circle everything D. And, of course, you know, that was uh, kind of like the grade I got, you know, D minus. But I was still happy because I barely, barely kind of passed my class. But anyways, I'm pretty sure all of you out there can relate. But let's go and take a look at the right answer. So the correct answer here is C, 9 a.m. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and a plus a 100% and a certificate of excellence for your ability to solve simple math word problems that involve percent, okay? And that's what we're really talking about here is your ability to solve basic percent math problems. Now, if there's one thing that you want to know in terms of practical mathematics, that is how to solve percent problems. This is everywhere in your everyday life. Matter of fact, if you look at your cell phone, you see this symbol percent, you see your battery, right? It's like, oh, I'm down to 10% charge. You go to the store, you see, hey, look at something's 30% off, uh, discount sale. Uh, you're watching TV and they're talking about interest rates. Hey, you get 5% in your bank account. Again, this symbol is everywhere, so it's a good idea to know a thing or two about it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And if you're not quite sure what to do in terms of how to solve this problem, this is not that difficult. Okay, so here is our problem. And uh, anytime you're dealing with a math word problem, even if it's simple, always try to get in the habit of using the rule of three. Now, the rule of three is simply read the problem at least three times and make sure you understand the question before you kind of proceed. So um, obviously, I've already read the problem a few times, but what we have here is we are going to work. Well, I assume it's work. It's a six-hour shift, so let's just uh, you know assume it's a work shift. But the main uh, idea here is that we're starting this six-hour shift at 7.30 a.m., now we are working, kind of doing a good job, you know, and uh, we're at 25% uh, completion in terms of our shift. What time is it? What time does that occur? So a great way to solve math problems, any problem, matter of fact, is to try to model it or visualize it. And this is where you can get creative in terms of how to uh, look at this problem. Now, uh, some of you out there, you know, probably could even do this problem in your brain. 
using mental math, that's perfectly fine. Uh, others of you out there have to write this stuff down. That's fine as well. But even those of you that, uh, you know, like, oh, this is one, two, three. Give me the calculator. I got the answer. Think about how you would explain this okay, to someone else. Let's say uh, your best friend is like, you know, uh, I'm very uh, sad. I don't understand what's going on. How would you teach this? Okay, because if you can teach something in a very clear manner, that's a good indication that you really know your stuff. And of course, if you are a student, your math teacher will certainly appreciate your ability to kind of tell the story of how you got to your solution. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, model this information. And I like to kind of look at things in terms of a little simple timeline like this. You can look at this in a, another manner, but effectively, this is a visual model of the problem. Okay, so here is our six hour shift and we're starting it at 7.30 a.m. And we finished 25% of our shift. We want to know what time is it at that point in the day, right? So we're starting at 7.30. We're 25% done. We just can't wait till the shift ends so we can get back on YouTube and learn more math with Mr. YouTube Math Man. But listen, we're not concerned about the, uh, the end time of the shift, right? So don't get confused in terms of what the problem is asking. The problem is asking what time is it at uh, when we're 25% done, okay? So when we are 25% uh, finished with a six hour shift. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we knew what 25% of six hours is in terms of time? Because if we knew that, then we could just kind of add it on to this 7.30 a.m. Okay, then we can figure this time out. So that's exactly what we need to do here. We need to figure out what is 25% of six or six hours. Okay, so if we get that right, then we know what 25% is in terms of actual time, right? That's what we need to know what is this amount of time from here to here. Okay, so this question now really becomes 25% of six. So what is 25% of six or six hours? So uh, for those of you that are tempted to use your calculator, you should remember that when you wanna take the percent of a number, what we need to do is change this percent to a decimal and multiply by the number. So how do we do that? Well, we divide by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal point over two places to the left. Okay, so if you have 25%, uh, percent, which is 25.0%, the decimal point's here. So if we scoot that decimal point over two places to the left, we have 0.25. So we're gonna take that 0.25, multiply by six, and we're gonna get 1.5 hours. All right, so that's a, a very easy direct way. But we could do this problem, again, without the aid of a calculator. So 25%, well, how can we think of 25% in an uh, easy way? Well, the definition of percent is comparing that percent to 100, okay? So in other words, 5% uh, is five over 100, okay? That is 5%, uh, or 50% is 50 over 100. Anytime you're comparing, um, uh, anytime you have a fraction where the denominator is 100, the numerator is the effective percent. So 25% is the same thing as 25 over 100, which is the fraction one fourth if we, uh, if we reduce it. But uh, also 25% is the same thing as 0.25 as a decimal. Okay, so remember when you are uh, converting or writing uh, a percent as a decimal, the step is you divide by 100. But we could just kind of divide by 100 and just stop right there and not get the decimal. So we can just have a simple fraction. So 25 over 100 is the fraction one, uh, one fourth. So we can multiply uh, like over here, let me kind of go back. We multiply the decimal by the number. This is the most typical way of um, you know finding the percent of a number. But here, instead of the decimal, I can easily just multiply that number by the fraction, not the decimal, okay, because they are equivalent. So instead of 0.25, let's multiply six by one fourth. So we have one fourth times six. And when we multiply fractions, remember uh, we're gonna multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So one times six is six, four times one is four. So we have six over four. All right, but we can reduce this fraction to this fraction, three halves. And now we have uh, three over two. But let's go ahead and uh, change this improper fraction 
Now notice I just said improper. In, uh, an improper fraction is where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So a proper fraction would be like 2 sevenths where the denominator is bigger than the numerator. Anytime you have the numerator bigger than the denominator, that's called an improper fraction. And we could turn these uh, fractions into mixed numbers by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So we could take 3 and divide it by 2 and do some old school arithmetic. Uh, don't you just miss this? I remember doing this way back in like 1970, oh, I don't know, maybe 75, 76. Uh, all I remember is my first or second grade teacher was smoking in the classroom. Those were, the, I guess, the good old days, or maybe not so good old days. But anyways, so we're going to take that 3 and divide it by 2. Okay, so uh, uh, three goes, uh, 2 goes into 3 once, so 1 times 2 is 2. Subtract 1, and then we have 1 half as a remainder. So 1 and 1 half is the same thing as 1.5 hours. Okay, so either way, we have 1.5 hours as the answer here of 25% of 6 hours. All right, so now what are we going to do? Well, what we're going to do now is this, and that is to have you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel before we um, actually figure this problem out. And I'm also going to show you another uh, approach that you could take to answer this question, but uh, uh, I'll kind of get to that in just one second. Now, why am I stopping this lovely math video uh, to ask for your help? Well, I have a goal, okay? Now, these are two words that hopefully uh, you embrace. You should have goals, and if you're trying to reach those goals, oftentimes you need to ask for help. So if you want to pass your math class, or if you want to get an A in math, or whatever the case is, you know, set a goal, okay? And then, you know, obviously, uh, you know, do as much as you can on your own, but get help when you need help, right? So if you're struggling in math, don't stay in that, uh, you know, kind of status of, you know, um, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just thinking about this. I'm, you know, what's going to happen? I'm not going to pass my test. I'm not going to be able to move on. Well, you got to actually stop that cycle of thinking and say, all right, who can help me? <laughs> and I can just tell you right now, uh, you have to be very careful on the people you choose uh, to help you with something. Okay. That is, you know, you got to use good judgment there. When it comes to math, you should always start with your math teacher. But beyond that, okay. Find someone that really knows their stuff, and then you understand. So if you like and understand my instruction, check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video. Uh, and for those of you that might want to relearn math, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course or my Math Foundations course. My Math Foundations course is a starter course, uh, kind of like a, a quick basic math review or boot camp, if you will. Uh, reset to kind of rebuild these uh, skills that most of us kind of forgot many years ago. Ago, excuse me. But uh, anyways, uh, by you subscribing, I just want you to know it really does help me reach a lot more people, and that gives me motivation to try to you know uh, continue on and you know uh, post as much content as I possibly can because math is a pretty infinite topic. There is a lot to cover. And I try to cover from basic math to advanced math. So thanks for giving me a little bit of time to explain to you why I do what I do. Now let's get back to this problem. So we already now know that 25% of this six-hour shift is uh, 1.5 hours. So we just need to tack this 1.5 hours on top of our 7.30 a.m. starting time. And we can get to this time. But remember, our answer is 1.5 hours. So uh, this uh, we have here... 7.30 is what? This is in hours, and this is in minutes. So instead of uh, having 1.5 hours, maybe we can think of 1.5 hours as 1 hour and 30 minutes, because that's what it is, right? So 1 half, or 0.5 of 1 hour, is 30 minutes, because there is 60 minutes in 1 hour. Okay, so hopefully most of you uh, understand that. So one, again, 1 1.5 hours, the same thing as one hour, 30 minutes. Now we can just go back to our lovely schedule here and tack on uh, that one hour and 30 minutes to our 7, uh, 30 a.m. start time. So we could put 30 minutes there. That gets us to eight o'clock right here. And then we have one more hour. That brings us to 9 a.m. All right, so this is how uh, you can answer this question. But there is another easy approach if you have your calculator to figure this out as well. Let me go back all the way to the beginning of this problem, okay? So here is what you could do as well. Now, when you're dealing with a math uh, multiple choice question, 
uh, nine times out of 10, you can use the answers to help you uh, figure out, you know, the actual correct solution to the problem, okay? Even if you don't know how to do the problem. So let's go ahead and circle our answer 9 a.m. Say, all right, well, let me just test this. How can I let's see if this is right? Well, what you could do is say, well, okay, so 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., uh, that is 1.5 hours, okay, 1.5 hours. So you say, all right, that's how many, uh, how much time was, um, uh, you know, covered between this uh, time from 7.30 to 9 a.m., 1.5 hours passed. So is 1.5 hours 25% of six? So you can just get, take your calculator and take 1.5 and divide it by six. And if you get 0.25, uh, that's the decimal for uh, 20, you know, decimal equivalent of 25%, then indeed that is the correct answer. Okay, so you could have used <laughs> the answers here to figure it out that way. And if you did that, that's fantastic because it shows that you were paying attention. Hey, this is a multiple choice exam. So I kind of gave you, um, or multiple choice question. So I kind of gave you two approaches you could take. One, if you have a multiple choice option in a math question, but if you don't, then, of course, you're going to have to take the direct route, which we already covered. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.